Hi, I'm Professor Johnson, and in this video we are going to be talking about the basics of meiosis. Uh, so meiosis, you may know, is the division of cells that leads to the production of sex cells. Um, it's going to be similar in many ways to mitosis, uh, but different in important ways that um, are necessary for the cell to become um, a sex cell. So first, uh, going through a few terms. So um, gametes are, the, are what are produced through um, uh, meiosis. So the gametes are your sperm cells and your egg cells. Um, now these are haploid, meaning that they only have half uh, the chromosomal number. Um, so they don't have the pairs of chromosomes that you would normally see in a diploid cell. This over here, after the cell is fertilized, is the zygote. It is diploid, so it has these pairs of chromosomes. Um, so this is what the cell looks like when it's diploid. This is what the cell looks like uh, when it's haploid. Um, the zygote uh, will give rise to many different types of cells. Uh, some of the cells that it gives rise to are the somatic cells. So soma means body. So these are the cells of your body that aren't uh, involved in reproduction. Uh, the other cells that it gives rise to are the germline cells. So the germline cells are the cells that will divide to eventually give you uh, the gametes. So um, the gametes are the produced when the germline cells uh, go through uh, meiosis. So uh, to get ourselves reacquainted with uh, the chromosomes, let's do a little bit of review on the structure of chromosomes. So each of these chromosomes uh, are uh, made up of the two double strands of DNA. Over here on this side, we have a pair of chromosomes. So these are uh, homologs or homologous chromosomes, um, meaning that they have the same genes on them, but they might not be the identical versions of the genes. So they may have different alleles on um, these chromosomes, but th it'll be the same genes that are present on both of these. Now, one of these uh, chromosomes here originally came from your father, um, from the sperm cell, and the other one originally came from your mother, um, so the egg cell. Uh, now, when these cells replicate, they start to look like structures um, like this. So now we will have the sister chromatids. So the sister chromatids are, um, are, med are connected here at the centromere. So you have the one chromosome here, and you have the other chromosome um, here. Or, and these are actually considered um, the same chromosome because they are sister chromatids and they're attached. So this is considered one chromosome. This is considered a second chromosome. But you have twice the genetic material that you have over here because the DNA has replicated. So um, you have what will eventually be two separate chromosomes uh, when they are replicated. So homologs homologs, sister chromatids, sister chromatids. Um, now, just a little bit of an overview on meiosis. So uh, meiosis uh, consists of two divisions instead of just the single division that uh, mitosis consists of. Um, the first division is the reductive division. It's considered the reductive division because um, this is the division from which the cell will go from being a haploid cell to being a, or going from being a diploid cell to being a haploid cell. So after the first division, the cell is going to be um, haploid. Um, the second division uh, is going to further separate it. So we've got to separate the homologous chromosomes and we also have to separate the sister uh, chromatids. So the homologous chromosomes get separated during the first division, the sister chromatids get separated during the second division. Uh, DNA replication does occur during meiosis. It occurs before the first division, um, but there is no division between the two, uh, or there is no replication between the two divisions of meiosis. Um, something that's unique to meiosis is the phenomenon, phenomena of synapsis. Um, this is where the homologous pairs of chromosomes actually align, and then crossing over, where they'll actually swap uh, genetic information. Um, and the other uh, thing that's important about meiosis um, is the um, phenomenon of independent assortment. Um, so this is looking at how the different homologs uh, align um, is going to be independent of how the other homologs align. And we'll see this um, as we go through. 
So first of all, we have synapses. So synap synapses for each of the homologous pairs of chromosomes, we're just showing the two chromosomes here for simplicity. Most organisms will have um, more than just these two chromosomes. They actually line up on the cell on top of one, one another. Now I'm going to be showing this a little bit different to illustrate a different point, um, but know that uh, both of the sister chromatids are going to line up with, uh, on one chromosome, are going to line up with sister chromatids um, of the, on the other homologous protein. So it really looks like this, where you have this one sister chromatid on top of, of the red one on top of the blue sister chromatid um, on the other chromosome. And same here on this side. So you um, are going to have synapses on both sides. I don't really show that on these next slides. Um, so when you have synapsis, you're going to have these regions where um, you actually have a covalent bond change such that this arm of the chromosome um, gets swapped over onto the other chromosome. So you have this blue information coming over here, and uh, so the, on this red chromosome here, you have um, the blue information coming over and it swaps over, and you have the red information swapping over to the blue. So whereas this used to be a completely blue arm, it now has a red um, region to it. And this is going to happen several times on um, both of these uh, sister chromatids because they're lined on top of each other, remember? So it's happening multiple times on both of them, so you're going to have a lot of different um, swapping going on in each of the places. I'm only showing the one spot for simplicity. And this is going to happen on all of your chromosomal pairs. So you can see that I um, did it on this big pair of chromosomes as well. Now, during anaphase or during metaphase, I want to point out that uh, during meiosis, these aren't going to align. So that you'd have one of these homologs um, lining up in the middle, and the other one would line up in the middle as well. Um, instead of having them line up together, so they're actually pairing in meiosis. Uh, one um, compared to mitosis where they did not actually pair, and that's important. So this pairing means that it's actually going to be the homologous chromosomes that separate, unlike, unlike um, in mitosis where it was the sister chromatids. So you actually pull those apart. Notice that when you pull that apart, this genetic information, um, so where these were crossed were known as chiasmata. Um, these chiasmata then break, and as you break these chiasmata, some of the genetic information that was originally on this chromosome over here gets put on this chromosome. So this is now um, more unique than uh, what it was, and this sister chromatid will no longer be identical to this sister chromatid because you now have this region right here um, that is different over here. Before, because these were uh, due to DNA replication, these were identical, now these aren't different. So this is the first thing that contributes to the genetic diversity um, of your offspring. So all these gametes are going to be different now because you had crossing over um, occur. Now the second thing that contributes to this is the independent assortment. So I'm showing two different possibilities here. Uh, one possibility are that the blue chromosomes, uh, which I'll be calling the paternal chromosomes, line up on one side of the cell and the, red, and the maternal ones, the red ones, line up on the other. So now when these separate, um, you will have the red cell or the red chromosomes on one side and blue chromosomes on the other. Another possibility for how they could align is that the, uh, the um, paternal chromosome and the maternal chromosome um, of a different homologous pair could line up on one side and then you'd have the opposite on the other. And so this would produce um, different cells as well. So you can see how this leads to four different gametes that are going to be produced. In reality, there's going to be a lot more different possibilities because um, I'm only showing the simple uh, situation here where you have two chromosomes, but um, the actual number uh, of possibilities for independent assortment is going to be 2 to the n, where n is the number of chromosome pairs. So 2 to, in this case, it's going to be 2 to the 2, so you can see that you end up with four different possibilities here. Um, in, uh, if in humans, it would it'd be 2 to the 23, since you have 23 different pairs. So it leads to a lot more um, diversity in the different kinds of pairing that can um, actually go on. And so this is actually what the chromosomes will look like, or what the cells will look like after 
uh, meiosis I. You're going to have them separated into different cells. Notice that the homologous pairs are no longer in the same cell, um, but the sister chromatids are still attached. So in the second phase of meiosis, you're actually going to have to separate the um, sister chromatids. So this is going to look a lot more like mitosis, where you have them aligning in the middle of the cell, um, and then these are going to pull to one side, these are going to pull to the other side, and you're going to have these different chromosomes um, or different cells being produced uh, from this. And remember, you have two cells here since you went through one uh, round of cell division that produced two different cells. So now you have the two different cells um, that are possible. And um, so this is what it looks like after meiosis two, where you're going to have these separated um, onto each side. Now I want to point out that because crossing over has occurred, um, it won't be equivalent uh, with this. So in this slide, I'm showing the four different possible or the four different cells that are being produced from these. Um, in this next slide after this. Um, I'm just looking at these and seeing how they could be oriented differently. So you can see this is in the middle here is how they're originally oriented in the previous slide, um, where you have the two chromosome sister chromatids that had the crossing over occur on one side on the same side. You can have them aligned so that that isn't the case. Uh, and in reality, crossing over is going to occur multiple times. Um, so it's going to, you're going to have crossing over on both of these, but how one homologous pair of or one chromosome lines up in the middle of the cell is not going to affect how another chromosome lines up in the middle of the cell. So this um, also contributes to the genetic diversity of um, the offspring. So what's really contributing during meiosis is the independent assortment of chromosomes. Um, uh, of the homologous pairs of chromosomes during meiosis I. Um, the fact that you're also having something similar going on during meiosis II, um, the chromosomes are now different because of crossing over, uh, or the sister chromatids are now different because of crossing over. Before they were identical, after crossing over they're different. And crossing over is the other thing that contributes to the genetic diversity. Alright, I hope this was informative to you and I'll see you guys next time.